All right, then. So we've got the horseshoe dynamical system, but what can we say about this map? Well, there are a few simple things that we can observe just from the way we've defined it. Given this horseshoe map, from the plane to the plane that takes the square, squeezes it, stretches it, bends it around into a horseshoe shape, lays it down on top, the first fact, very important, our motivation for this whole thing is that this is an invertible transformation. Now, you can kind of see that from the definition, the way that we deformed the plane smoothly into this. But since we don't have a formula, we can't exactly just invert it. It's best to illustrate. Instead of squeezing horizontally, stretching vertically, and then bending over in that clockwise direction, we're going to do the reverse. Starting with our square, we're going to squeeze vertically, stretch horizontally, and bend it over in a counterclockwise manner. What we're going to get is the unit square turning into, again, a horseshoe, but a horseshoe on the side. And we can do or undo this by moving the map backwards or forwards. Now notice that this does have a really nice symmetry with respect to the forward application of the horseshoe map. So even though we haven't written down equations, this still has the feel of an inverse to it. Now again, we don't care so much about the specifics as just the general shape or qualitative features of what's happening, that the stretching, the squeezing, and the folding are all happening in the appropriate manner. Now, what can we say about the dynamics of the horseshoe map? There are a few things that are obvious. In particular, F has an equilibrium at the origin. If I think about it, remember that the lower left-hand corner of that square was at the origin, and in the forward application of the map, we're squeezing, stretching, bending over. Yeah, that origin remains fixed. And furthermore, because of the way the squeezing and the stretching goes, this is clearly a saddle. And the stable and the unstable eigenspaces, in fact, the stable and the unstable manifolds, to that saddle match with the x and y axes. The x-axis is the stable direction, and the y-axis is the unstable direction. Now that one is obvious. What's not so obvious is that there is an additional equilibrium, one more equilibrium. And where is it? Well, if we think in terms of those strips, you have that horizontal strip on the bottom that gets stretched out vertically and squeezed horizontally. And then I've got that strip at the top that again does its thing in the upper right hand corner, not right at the corner, somewhere in the intersection of those two strips, there's another equilibrium. And it too is a saddle. Now, it's not exactly obvious that that equilibrium has to exist. And it's certainly not clear exactly where it's located, but it is there. It does exist along with a lot more. Why a lot more? Well, this is really not obvious, but this really is a chaotic system. There's a whole lot more going on here than what is obvious, and a whole lot more than just two equilibria. Now, this is going to take us some effort, but it will very much be worth the trouble.